don't look at who that person is today. Look at where they came from. What was their family life like? Back then, they would be like, if you look at a World War II veteran, understand that they may not like Japanese people because they fought in the war. Mm -hmm. You know, understand that your grandfather, maybe he's racist because of experiences that he had. And so I, when I look at people, that's why I try to see. It's not just that person, but what are their experiences? What got them to be where they are? Why did they have that point of view? And it's really helpful. And that's why I try to help people understand when you look at the situation, again, 18 year old kid, 19 year old kid, you look around the world right now, you're like, why is it like this? This doesn't make any sense. Oh, and then you hear, well, back in 1860, you know, black people were slaves. Well, well that was 200 years ago, get over it. But understand that that's been going on ever since then. That goes on even to this day. And understand like, you know, just one real quick statistic, white people have 10 times the wealth of black people. Mm -hmm. the, the average wealth of a white person is 10 times what a black person is. Is that because white people are smarter or because they work harder? Well, no, it's because of systemic things that have put in, been put in place that built white wealth in the 1950s that's generational that gets passed down. So helping people understand why we are where we are can help people to empathize a little bit more. And that's how we begin to change things. And then when you hear things like, well, we need to do affirmative action or we need to do reparations and people would bristle against that and say, well, that's not fair. I didn't have anything to do with this. And then maybe you understand a little bit more why other people were, were have a disadvantage.